Centered dogma suggests that M1 macrophages play a more relevant role in control of um, bacterial infections, particularly intracellular bacterial infections. Um, what is the difference between macrophage type 1 and type 2? So macrophages type 1 and type 2 from central dogma suggests that um, the M1 phenotype is really involved in inflammation. And then the M2 phenotype is really usually involved in tissue repair and, and, and um, uh, mostly an, an inflammatory uh, uh, type. Uh, although this has been done, I think, on um, usually in vitro work and also in mouse models, and, but there's a lot of now um, talk about whether this is up, this is true in vivo, and uh, we're doing uh, some work uh, in this area. How has your research added or contradicted to this, uh, particularly when you're looking at macrophages in the lungs or alveolar macrophages? So, so for more work, we recently did a study where we were looking at uh, the phenotype of macrophages in the lungs. And we did this in two populations. We did it in the population of Africans and then in, uh, in the UK, in the population of Europeans. What was obvious to us is that when you look at the macrophage phenotype, the main subset of macrophages seems to have ex expressing both the classic M1 and M2 markers, suggesting that maybe this M1, M2 classification does not always apply to all macrophages. And also uh, other people are now beginning to see the same thing. And the now new dogma on this is that M1 and M2 phenotype is probably usually a continuum. So macrophages can go through these two sets, sets depending on the environment that they're in. Okay. Um, yesterday you gave a very interesting talk at the IDA which showed that um, immune responses between um, blood, so peripheral, peripheral blood mono, uh, mononuclear cells and the respiratory mucosa are quite different. And um, what differences do you see particularly at CD8 T cells and what impact does it have in immune phenotype and understanding function? So for example, when you classically look at CD8 responses, you look at cytotoxic ability and the ability to kill cells or produce granzyme molecules, and you kind of put the, the cytokine expression profiles at the back of your an analysis. Yes, that's, that's, that's a very good and interesting question. So when we started this work, we really wanted to understand um, why does HIV persist in the lungs. So previously, we had done some work to show that you can find HIV-infected macrophages, HIV-infected T cells in the lung, even in individuals that have been suppressed uh, in terms of plasma uh, viremia. And what was obvious to us that when you take uh, uh, CD8 T cells from PBMCs or from the blood, and CD8 T cells from the lung, they were very different. In that the CD8 T cells from the lung. Uh, lacked expression of perforin and 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 granzyme B, which are really the classic markers for uh, cytolytic function of the cells. So, uh, of course, not in every individual do you find this kind of phenotype. In some of them, mostly, what you would normally find is that they'll have low expression of perforin and low expression of granzyme B, completely different from what you find in in, in, in the PBMCs. So, um, what's the functional relevance for this? I think it's really important to consider what is the main function of the lung. So the lung usually is for breathing. That's what we, we, it's supposed to be for. So if you have lots of CD8 T cells that are perforated and grounds them in the lung, uh, uh, the impact of that might be that you might actually have um, lung damage. So we think maybe this is just a natural process of trying to control inflammation in the lung in that you have less uh, toxic uh, T cells in this environment. At the same time, I think classically we have studied the CD8 T cells from textbooks that all CD8 T cells are cytotoxic. But even from blood, you can see that not all CD8 T cells express perforin and granzyme, suggesting that uh, CD8 function is not only about cytotoxic potential in terms of perforin and granzyme, but even the anti uh, um, cytokine producing function of the CD8 is extremely important. So for example, in HIV, you can also find that HIV CD8 responses can produce uh, MIP1 beta, which is also an important uh, uh, cytokine that can control or suppress HIV infection. So cytokines are also important. So it does seem like maybe the CD8 T cells in the lung, mostly they perform this function of cytokine production other than uh, dielectric cytotoxic killing using perforin and granzyme. Okay, um, thank you very much for taking time to conduct this interview. Thank you so much.